Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and welcome to a Pro Cycling Manager 2022 tutorial on how to set up your season in career mode. To do this, we're going to go ahead and take on a team that's going to offer us a mix of things going on, which will be useful uh, in this setup process, and that is Archaea Samsic. Now, season setup is something that technically can be done over the course of the season. Realistically, though, it's something that should be done entirely within the first week and more realistically within the first two to three days of the year and the entire process is already taken care of. The AI can handle some of the additional details along the way that will actually make the process a bit easier than what it used to be in years past. Now, the reason why I've gone with Archaea Samsic is primarily down to the fact that they are a large continental pro team. As a result, they are in limbo. If you are a World Tour team, you are guaranteed to be in all World Tour races. Your calendar is something that is quite easy to set up. If you are a Continental team, you will not participate in any World Tour races. Therefore, your calendar is easy to set up. But when you're Continental Pro, there are at-large bids, there are invites to World Tour races that you can obtain, as most of you would know unless you are new to the game, but obtaining those has to do with a number of factors. Some of them are how you did previously. Archaea Samsic is one of those top teams. They will have a lot of World Tour invites, and you can see just from our list here, uh, we are beginning with World Tour races for all of our top objectives, meaning we will at least be in those five, otherwise they would not be labeled as objectives, and I would imagine quite a few others. If you are a Continental Pro team and you're wondering how do you get to World Tour races, how do you get into them, the easy way to do that is on the first day of the year, select Team, Calendar, and then it's broken up into quadrants. So you're going to have to click through those quadrants one by one. But the easiest thing, instead of going through the calendar day by day by day, is to click on category and it will reorganize. And the CWT is World Tour. So Cyanide World Tour uh, in this game. These are all races you can see we are already signed up for. We're in those ones. We are not in the UAE Tour as it's unselected. We have no invite. But if you click on plus, you are potentially getting yourself into that race. Now, you're going to have to wait for the organizers to come back and say whether you've made it in or not. And that does put a little bit of a delay on the process when it comes to being a Continental Pro team. The larger the team, the bigger the reputation, the better the performance the season prior, the more likely you are to get an invitation. If you are a total unknown Continental team that suddenly jumps up into Continental Pro, like I did in my career mode, the one sponsor objective automatic race was the only one we had in that first year in Continental Pro. In my second year in Continental Pro, after establishing, establishing ourselves, getting a number of wins over the course of the year, building a little bit of a reputation, we still didn't get into a lot but we got into a lot more races in our second year as a Continental Pro team. Like I said before, Archaea Samsic would have no problem getting plenty, and you can see they already have. Be careful though, you do wanna make sure that you continue to scroll down to check. One thing that I generally do, especially with a smaller Continental Pro team that doesn't have a huge race calendar, but you can see Archaea already very busy. They have no problem getting invites to, to major races. One thing I like to do is I will literally go through and click that plus on all, all races that we do not already have set up that will uh, give you the best chance. But you can see scrolling down, Milano San Remo is another one that we uh, weren't already automatically in. Be sure to check your categories and then make sure you get into those other periods of the month here, April and May. Reselect those categories and Make sure you're checking those off if you want to participate in additional races, especially those World Tour ones that'll help build your profile. That being said, outside of a, just a handful of teams, 
Finances are a serious consideration in this game. In particular, if you're starting small, if you start with a Continental or if you start with a small Continental Pro team, finances are going to be a major part of what you do through the series. Therefore, building your finances is probably the key thing of each and every season. You can see with Arkea, they already have a $395,000 per month budget. Next season, if we do well, getting above 85% in the evaluation, getting up here into the blue, if that sponsor confidence is high, it's going to rise by almost 100000 Now, that is a significant increase that can really put you in position to, well, win a lot. In fact, the 395000 that we already have, not counting the extra 100000 come next season, that's already larger than any budget that I've ever had in my career mode in any recent years. You can do a lot with that money. At an extra hundred k is a superstar salary in and of itself. But if you are trying to build that budget, which most of us will be doing, you need to key in on the objectives. The objectives are going to be the primary way or success in world tour races, national championships, Euros, world championships. Outside of those events, it is your sponsor objectives where you are going to make or break your season and increase that budget. So the first thing to do for me is go through and make note of the big objectives. There's too many objectives on the calendar to worry about all of them, to plan for all of them, but plan for the ones that are of higher importance. A few ways to do that, like this, you can organize them through that. These are those same five at the top of the list that we saw on the previous page, but now we can also see a couple more key objectives. National Championships for France in this case, Perry Tour Elite, Probably a small enough objective that I'm not going to worry about that as much. So for us, our calendar is going to come down to five key dates. But the most important thing here is to recognize that the signing period for your sponsor is the final day of July. So any August objectives, concluding August, are irrelevant. They do not matter. So the, the Breton Classic... 28th of August, we don't have to worry about that one. Therefore, there are four dates on our calendar that I would at this moment either take a screenshot of or write it down. I like to write it down. I'm a notepad kind of person, sticky notes. I will write those four down. And in doing so, in doing so, I'm going to make note of a few things. First off, I want to know making sure that it's within our window, but I like to write down which category it's in, especially when you are a Continental or Continental Pro team, you are going to have a lot of races of varying importance, varying categories in which they are found with really long lists, especially if you're playing with a modded database. Therefore, knowing the category will help you find the race later when you need it. But the other important detail besides the name is what is the objective? Because getting a stage win in the Tour de France is a very, very different matter than getting a podium place in the GC at the end of the race. A top 10 in Paris-Roubaix, well, that's an easy to know objective because it's one day, it's a classic. Therefore, it's always gonna be about placement at the end of that one. But it's still important to know that I need a top 10. Whereas in Paris-Nice, I need a top five. And in the Dauphiné, I need a top five, which again, that top five is a very different thing to focus on than the stage win. That requires a different set of teammates to make that happen in general. Results is only one third of your evaluation. Registered riders and squad evaluation are two other factors that make up a huge percentage of your overall sponsor confidence. Now. The signing period for the season is already done and the riders you have are the riders you have. If they want to see more riders from France, there's nothing you could do about that this year. But if they want a popular rider from France, knowing that Warren, Warren Barguil is your most popular guy, might be of your best interest over the course of the season to 
favor Bargiel in the occasional race to build his popularity. If he gets a few wins, he's going to be more popular. But the biggest thing that's relevant here to January 1 is who is the most popular rider on the team? For us, that's an easy one. It's Nairo Quintana. Quintana has been a podium uh, finisher at the Tour de France on more than one occasion. He's a big name in the sport. So Quintana, easily the most well-known rider on the team. Why this is important is that registered riders section. During key races, during sponsor objectives, it's important that there are popular names wearing your jersey because popular guys get TV time. TV time gets your sponsors on TV. Natural connection there, right? So your evaluation is higher if you bring Quintana to a race. Now, Quintana, for those who don't know, is a climber. That is his primary attribute. Quintana is not somebody you need at Paris-Roubaix. He's not going to do very well there at all. He's not good in the cobbles, and he is no sprinter. Flat terrain is not his area. But if you gave your last domestique spot to Nairo Quintana, he's still going to end up getting on TV. Therefore, your sponsor is going to be happy. So keeping a high evaluation on registered riders is going to come down primarily. Now, if you have more than one team leader, Warren Barguil is somebody who's fairly popular with this team and would be a good alternative. Taking your team leader to all of those major races, regardless of whether they are going to help the team in those races or not, it's one slot. It's one slot on your team. If the race is made for them, great. They're your leader. Otherwise, they're a domestique, but they're boosting your registered writer's evaluation, which is helping you on that sponsor confidence. So I would also make note of who that most popular writer is or writers. From there, I shift on over to the objectives tab under team. And this is where the magic happens for your season. If you do nothing with this one, the AI will, as you can see, assign writers to various objectives, and you will see repeatedly over the course of your season stretches where there's too much going on, back to back to back objectives for riders stretched out over a month. And what you're gonna end up seeing is the rider being in great shape for the first one, and then blowing up in the later ones. Too much fatigue, fitness peaks long gone, and you're gonna see those riders really struggle in those races. So here is what I like to do when it comes to objectives. First things first, click this little button to select all, and then I will delete all objectives for my team. I make my own objectives. Then go ahead and unselect. Now, we start with those finances, right? Your whole season comes down to the finances. Many of you will do each and every race. Some of you will occasionally simulate some. I love to get through a lot of seasons. I love to see a team grow from something very, very small, the have-nots, to eventually become the haves, to be successful at the highest level. It takes a lot of seasons to make that happen. Therefore, I like to keep the pace of my seasons moving along, which means primarily I'm doing world tour races and or sponsor objectives to make sure we raise those finances so we can climb that ladder. Therefore, my focal point is those sponsor objectives. So I'm gonna begin with what is the most important, which for us is the Tour de France. So the first thing you would wanna do is look at the profile and see what type of riders do you need for that race. Anybody who knows the sport knows that you're gonna need somebody who is really good at climbing, you're gonna need somebody who is a very good time trialist, and then you're gonna need a good support team. However, it's about the objective. What is the objective for us? win a stage there's different ways to go about that there's very different ways to go about that you can win a stage from the breakaway you can win the stage as a top climber you can win the stage as a top time trialist as a sprinter or a puncher there's so many different ways to go about that process and different riders are going to provide you different ways of doing that so before i can go in and pick a team for the Tour de France and give them all the objectives so that they are prepared for it when the time comes. They'll get a bonus for having the objective and they will build fitness 
towards that event, making them more effective when that event is actually taking place. But I don't know who to pick. We all know about Nairo Quintana, but does everybody know about Laurent Pichon? Probably not. So how do we figure out about that? How do we prepare to make these objectives? Here's the way I like to do it. I go to squad view, attributes. Do not take, if you see this white dot, white dot, white dot, click this button up here to display of starting attributes. We want to ignore fitness. We want to know what the real attributes are of the rider. This is now everybody's not January 1st, not yet fit. This is how they really are. What I like to do at this time, I take a sticky note and label a number of key attributes that set you up for varying profiles of races. So I begin by selecting mountain and it's going to organize everybody by the best climbers. And I will show you an example from my career team right now. I have six columns on mine. The first one is mountain. I write down QUI for Quintana and then I'm going to draw a little line under it. He is far and above everybody else on this team as a pure climber. He's the leader always for a climb because of how much better he is compared to everybody else. But then below that little line, I'm going to add in four more names, Barguil, Gisbert, Ede, and Reese, 74, 75s. That's the next tier. In many races, especially if you're focused on winning in overall, you're going to need a lot of good support climbers. Five total riders may not be enough to make that happen. Therefore, you're likely to need additional ones. I'm going to look through the rest of this list and probably pick out a couple of additional ones based on different factors. How punchy are they? Well, these guys are all 73s, so they're neck and neck. And they're all 73s or 72s for punchiness. That does not set them apart. What could set them apart? Stamina and resistance. Something that allows them to stick around longer. So you can see we have one that's definitely weaker. Eduardo Flores Miguel at 6666. He's not going to be terribly useful to these guys. Maxime Bouet. Bouet has a 72 stamina, 68 resistance, which is okay. But he also has high recovery. So for a stage race, useful. Useful domestique in the mountains. I'd add in those couple more names to give myself roughly roughly six to seven riders in most every category. So you have a diversity of options that you know ahead of time. Who's the guys you would want to go to in this type of scenario? I'm gonna repeat this step five more times. One for hills, top two guys, next four guys. That's probably a good enough list at that point. That's already six names. Then I'm gonna look at time trial. When you're looking at time trial, uh, by the way, when you're looking at hills, one other factor you want to look at is acceleration. When you're looking at time trial, you want to make sure you're also looking at prologue. And I'll make that same sort of list. My next one, the cobble rating. Who's best set to do well in that type of classic? And you can see we have, you know, a top six, really, already top six right there. And then there's your seventh. You want to have somebody popular. We want somebody known. Quintana. Not too bad in the cobbles. Would be a great domestique option for Perry Roubaix, along with your six best cobble riders. Next up is my sprint team. Now, when I do sprint team, I'll start with who are the best sprinters, pure sprinters. That's going to be your leader when you really want to go to it on a sprint race. Who your backup leaders are, but more importantly, your lead out riders. But then, Who's your sprint train? Now to de determine sprint train, once you've gotten through your first few guys, use flat rating for that one. Combine sprint and acceleration, and then flat. The last thing that I look for, my sixth category, from here, I go back to evaluation. And this one's just personally what I like to do, is by this stage, we've written down about six names in five different categories. That's 30 names. Most of us aren't going to have 30 riders on our teams. However, you're going to see a lot of overlap. If we look at Mountain, who's at the top of the list, Quintana, 
You go to punchiness. Who's at the top of the list? Quintana. He's in more than one category for us. If you look at Connor Swift, he's one of our punchiest guys. He's also one of our best time trial lists. He's also one of our best cobble rated guys. He's also not too bad in the sprint. So Connor Swift might make the list four times. So at the end of the day, you're not going to be using 30 different riders in those five columns. Probably have 14, 15 names on the combined across those lists. So what about who's left? Who didn't make a list? From there, you generate a list of domestiques. For that, for me, I look at two things. Let's say at A and above make up this list, just theoretically. So that means we're looking at Boué and below. So looking at Boué and below, I'm going to look at how good they actually are because these guys at the bottom of the list, not as good. But I also want to look at their age and their potential. Boué is 35. Boué is not going to get any better. He's going to get worse. So unless I need him in the climbs, since that's his best rating, unless I need him, why would I use him? He's not going to be with the team long term. When his contract's expired, you're going to let Boué go. But what about Garnalak? How much potential does he have? Some. What about another rider? Here is a 20-year-old rider who's got some decent qualities and has a ton of pen potential as a stage racer, as a climber, as a puncher. This guy is going to be a pretty strong talent. But he didn't really make any of my lists. He is somebody who might be just good enough to be a climbing domestique or a punching domestique or with a 73 flat rating to give you a sprint train. So he's going right to the top of my domestique list. Somebody that I want to get in there on various days to get him as many days in the saddle as I can so that he can gain some experience and develop. We're going to go back over to objectives. I would have my list here as it's a tutorial. I did not write any of those down. So I don't have the kind of details I would normally have. However, from here, we're going to go in and establish those objectives. Now, if you are a weak team, you have got to stack the deck in your favor as much as you possibly can. So if you need to be going overall in a race that involves climbing as the primary obstacle, I'm going to select seven riders if there's seven available. Tour de France is eight, of course. But I'm going to select seven riders that offer me the best chance at being successful climbing. Meaning I'm going to take my seven best mountain rated guys with that last slot or two maybe going to the eighth best because they also happen to be punchy or because and there's a punchy stage or because they also happen to have a really good time trial rating and there happens to be a team time trial in that race but build your team based on the need for the objective we need a stage win at the tour de france quintana obviously is the most popular guy so we want him anyway he's also the best climber punchiest guy so he's gonna give you the best opportunity at getting a stage win in real life, Quintana has been in position in the breakaway many times. I think he had a top five on one of the stages, though he has not won one. Buwani probably gives us our best chance to win a sprint. However, at just 78-78, unless I have some good support leadout guys to go with him, might not be that helpful to us. We probably don't stand much of a chance of winning a sprint. If you got Bu Buwani into the breakaway on a sprint stage, if he's in the breakaway, he could probably beat the breakaway riders to cross that line first and win that stage. So make those decisions on who it is you're going to bring. But have the right number. If the race has zero of eight registered, make sure that you're checking that box for eight different riders the eight riders that fit your need the best or fit the needs of the needs meaning what do we want to do do we want to support Nairo Quintana for overall then we want seven support guys to help Quintana get over that line in the position he needs to be in 
if we want to ride for Connor Swift because there's a I don't know why we would ride for Co- for Connor Swift because he's not that great at anything. Let me give you a better example. How about Warren Bargill because he's a punchy rider and could have a good breakaway kind of situation. He's got a 77 bare door, so he's a decent guy with a breakaway chance. We've seen him go for King of the Mountains jerseys in various races. So maybe that's your objective. But figure out what your needs are and select eight, eight riders. Then over here, add the selected races as objectives for the rider selected in the table on the right. And there is your objective settled. As you create all of these across the entire season, make sure that they are spread out. You do not want back to back to back objectives as it will break down your riders and they will suffer and you will not gain the benefits that you are looking for. General rule of thumb, one per period of the season. Let's start with the objectives. We got the Tour de France. Peru Bay, another option. For that one, it's all cobble. Take your all, all cobble team. Take your highest cobble riders, riders plus Nairo Katana, right? For that registered rider part, give him that bonus. Select that team, bump it over, build your calendar up, starting with those objectives. Then start adding in those national championships, the world championships, the Euros, if you have space for additional objectives. Here's a quick and easy way to select national championships, by the way. So if you choose national championships, what you can do is you can actually check mark all, and then you can check mark all. And then if you add, you're gonna get a notice that is like, oh no, we cannot add these 1300 objectives. Okay, but oh look, they did add all these objectives for everybody else. Where they could, they added the objective. Where they couldn't, it didn't. Makes it a whole lot easier. There, now everybody on your team has preset national objectives. Don't want that to mess with your Tour de France? Just exit out. Cancel the objective. You could still have them race that day, but now they're not going to mess with trying to double fitness peak, and they won't crash out. They won't bonk out. They won't go too far into overtraining. So all you have to do is remove those objectives from those particular riders. But that was by far the quickest, easiest way to add national objectives. Do the same thing for the time trials. Do the same thing for the worlds if you want, or just know which riders. Know that Quintana and Buani are probably going to make the world's team. That Michael Reese out of Luxembourg, probably he's going to get the honor of representing his team because he's from a smaller nation. Now, after you've built out your objectives, in particular, those key objectives of the year, before you jump over to the planner, we need to get out of January 1st so we can get some of those invites out of the way. Go ahead and set your preseason. Now, I recommend all of your better riders just start on very high because you're going to have races early on in the year. If you don't have races early on in the year, you can back off a little bit, but you never really need to go lower than just high. 80 to 90% is already going to come with a minor penalty, but it's going to give you the opportunity to keep your riders fresh a bit longer. But there's no reason to ever go on low. 60 to 70%, you don't want your riders to ever be at that stage. Setting some of your riders to very high, your best riders, and then maybe setting everybody else to, to just high is a good way to set up. Once you have done that, you'll confirm. Proceed to January 2nd. Make sure that you've done your in, your requests to races before you proceed. But now that we have proceeded, we're going to start to see our list populate for some of these objectives. But what you want to do, and I don't think we're going to have the Tour de France yet because we're going to have to wait to find out if we actually got the invite or not. But what you'll do is you'll see the planner and you'll have all of your races listed at the top and you'll have a green line underneath the bar for each of the riders that have that objective selected. So you've already pre-selected your riders for the Tour de France once that one appears on the list. Just click and drag it as you will for, like say, the national championships for Belgium down here. So match your race list with your objective list following that pattern on the planner. And then you can leave monthly auto planning assistant active. And all these guys at the bottom of the team that had no objectives because they didn't make the list, they're not on my domestic list at all, 
all those random days, small races, the AI will automatically fill that out and put those guys in for those days. You want to set all your world tour races, even if they're not major objectives, go through. Minerva Classic, Sprint Finish, little bit of cobble. Take that list that you've made, look at who your Sprint and Cobble guys are, pick four of each, sign them up for that race. You'll be at your best for the big races. You'll be at your best for all the objectives. Let the AI fill in all the gaps. And that is your season setup done easy. I'm the Catholic Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.